Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ingeborg and the channel's name is Stitch Too Far and I talk about my stitching. As you may have seen from the length of the video, I expect this to be a long one because I will be talking about the Dutch retreat that we had last weekend. Uh, and I already know I'm going to forget to mention tons of stuff, so I apologize for that. Don't mean to do it, but you know, 40 plus, so my memory is gone. <laughs> anyway, um, what I will try and do is first uh, do a regular update of what I've been stitching on. Um, uh, I had some finishes and I had some goodies come in from Silks for You. And after that, uh, I have a crap ton, that's no other word of saying this, <laughs> of stuff to show you from the retreat. Because I might have gone a bit crazy and people went crazy and got me lots of nice gifts as well. So it's going to be what it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of rambling. So you better grab something to drink and something to stitch or, or keep you occupied occupied otherwise because this will take some time okay how are you doing i'm doing well i'm coming down i'm still a bit nasal from uh, a terrible uh, allergy attack two weeks ago now <clears throat> it's what is it oh it's the 13th today we better do some dark stitching today anyway rabbit holes um, so uh, two weeks ago we had a sudden uh, rise in the amount of pollen in the air and I'm allergic to trees mainly birch trees and they were on red alert for that and I, I felt it so I was out for the whole weekend and I wasn't taking any medication before that so I went straight to double doses and it settled a bit but yeah, it's been tricky ever since, but not too bad. I don't, uh, now that I'm on uh, medication regularly again, it's not a big issue, except that I still have a running nose and itchy eyes sometimes, but I'd, at least I'm not sneezing every five seconds. So, and that's worse things in the world. So I have been stitching, I have been busy at work as well. So uh, this week I haven't done a lot of stitching. But I will show you that I have a, a couple of finishes and no new starts, I think. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. And uh, just a few progress on a few of my whips and let's just start there. I forgot to take out um, to get the pattern that goes with this, but I finished on Emily C's birthday, I finished the uh, the goat load cell that she was doing and mine of course was a little bit different so this is uh, hands on design rise and grind um, I used uh, all the recommended threads I happen to have the recommended fabric as well uh, all I did is, is change uh, for a different for a variegated DMC the sun color because I liked it to be a bit more sunset variegated colors but this is the finish. Really happy with this. Not sure how I'm going to fully finish it. Uh, might do uh, like a flat ornament or maybe a cushion. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I'll just go back to Vonna's channel and be inspired by her finishes. And I'm sure to come up with something. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, I have a few more patterns in this series that I might use the same fabric for. Who knows? Uh, then I had on the binet, just before retreat, I had a start, um, sorry, a finish on my travel piece, which I haven't shown a lot, but this is what I was working on on the train and on my travels abroad. This is Hindsight, Let It Snow comes with the ornament. I haven't attached the ornament yet, but it'll it'll get on there. I'm stitching this on a opalescent Ada. I think it's yeah, it's a 14 count. Some I don't know where I got this, but uh, it's perfect for this type of stuff. So yeah, 
That's a finish. Yeah, really happy with that. This is going to be uh, some sort of Christmas ornament. But maybe I have another finish of a Christmas ornament that I didn't get to fully finish this year. I might, uh, last year I mean. So I think I might just save them up for when I'm in a more of a Christmas mood again. I'm just going to clean the lens. Okay. Uh, so my next travel piece that I started, oh that was a new start, is a Mill Hill Kit. It's one of the snow crystals. I already did two of them. Now this one is the ice crystal. I did uh, a purple one and a yellow one before this. So yeah, this is in my travel bag. Uh, coffee. Uh, then I worked on a few of my regular works in progress, including, uh, I worked on, <coughs> oh jeez, this is going well, Place of a Needle by Arlene Cohen, works by ABC, sorry for the glare. I finished uh, the poem, all I had to do is uh, get the last line in by the, the author and the dates. I didn't do that part. Um, this was when I was having my issues with my pollen allergy. But yeah, this is, this is how far I am at the moment. If you want to know any information on threads I use or fabric I use or designers or shops I always include them in the description box oh I didn't I thought I could, got the whole thing done but I didn't apparently I need one more line but yeah so we love this and I wasn't sure if I would have measured out enough to had, have added the extra lines but there will be no problem with having enough space in the bottom and as we are speaking the arizona retreat is going on so just like jesse marie i'm having quite a bit of knowing you're missing out but then again i'm still coming down from the Retreat high of the Dutch okay. retreat, so not as bad as it could be, I guess. Uh, okay, I also picked up Rain Dance by Long Dog Samplers for a bit. Um, this is a stitch along with uh, Stephanie Webb. Lindy stitches, yeah, see, brain freeze. Um, we're doing a, a, a long dog sampler uh, stitch along. Any any long dog sampler pattern will do. Um, hashtag long dog along. I'm working on rain dance. And I'm doing this uh, one over one. And I see, oh, I thought I had lost the needle, but it's on the other side. So, yeah. Uh, and I am so having fun. So last time you saw it, uh, I was uh, almost I was almost done with this part, and I moved down to the coco pelli and the hair bit, which I have of course, of course, which I finished. And you might notice that I've added the anat anatomically correct bits as well as suggested by the pattern. Yeah, really in love with this. Don't know which I like more, the, the little dude or the little hair. Love them both. Um, so that is that. Um, oh yeah, then I was, worked a little bit on my chatelaine. Um, uh, I think it was Brian who recommended trying out Easy PDF to find uh, easier to get uh, to the. Um, oh, I'm having a difficult time talking today. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, you suggest easy PDF because uh, that has an option to search for symbols. I tried to do that, but it didn't work for my chat lane uh, PDF because uh, I think Denise explained that it's a picture, so it doesn't recognize it. So unfortunately, that didn't work for me. Uh, so this is my uh, Chatelaine uh, Rajasthan Lotus Pond pattern and I'm working on the, the little dome in the middle. And here we are. It's hard to get it all into the picture. But yeah, as you can see, lots and lots of yellows and tan colors going on. I did finish the road stitches. I used this. Oh yeah, dang! I forgot that I also entered in the Miss Oso Crafty sale, her birthday sale. I used this one for her birthday sale as well as the Praise of the Needle, I think, pattern. So that worked out really well. Um, uh, whoop, yep, got it. And I think, oh yeah, there's one more work in progress that I can show you. So there's one more uh, last whip uh, work in progress that I can show you. This is I, this is a new start. Jeez, I don't my brain. I don't know. This is La Dida, a Serbian proverb. I purchased this a little while back, and I was inspired when I watched Laura's uh, messy situation last update, where she mentioned she got this after she saw it on my channel, and I thought, oh, I might as well start it then. <laughs> So I've been working on this um, at retreat and I started just before retreat. I'm working. Uh, I decided not to do the outer border because I didn't, it couldn't fit properly on my fabric and it didn't really add the part that I really wanted to have. So I'm almost done with the saying. I'm stitching this on picture this plus piece of fabric that I got in the last sale that they did. Um, 40 count linen over two with the re recommended uh, DMC colors and where I had them in my stash I substituted for the recommended um, uh, MPI silks. What is it needlepoint ink silks? Yeah I think so. Loving this I, I love it on this uh, fabric as well. Um, not sure how I'm going to love the top bit with all the repeats of all the little leaves, but well, we'll see when we get there, right? So that's the last thing of stitching I can show you. Um, just before retreat, uh, me and my close friend Anna-Rik ordered some silks for you from the Australian shop. Uh, well, not just before retreat, a few weeks before retreat, and they arrived just before retreat. Um, and I'm going to show you what we got. Uh, well, I'm not going to show you Anne-Rick's because she has them in her possession. And you can, I will link her um, Instagram down below where you can find a picture of what uh, colors that she got. But oh my god, I, was, I had never ordered from Silks for You before. I can't say I'm disappointed because those colors are gorgeous and 98% what I expected to get based on what I saw on her website. So, let's start with the two, we got six hangs in total because the six was a freebie. Uh, if you order five Hank, you get a six, six one for free. We ordered two that we are going to split, so I'm going to show those first and give you the right color. This is PR128. 
Right. This is a beautiful gold caramel. Let's see how this shows up. It shows up pretty accurate. It's a bit more saturated than what's showing on screen, especially the, the gold parts. Yeah, see? Oh, this is pretty good, actually. This is pretty close to real life. So, gorgeous, right? Oh my god. So what am I going to use this for? I will show you a bit later because I have a fabric for it now and I have a design in mind when I purchase this. So I will come back to that in a bit. Then we have the color that everyone at Retreat fell in love with. We, uh, we brought this to Retreat because I didn't see Anne just before Retreat, so she brought it because I hadn't seen them yet. But this is the PR147, the color that uh, uh, Mieke and her friend Patricia also fell in love with. And it's just an amazing turquoise. It's just, it's, it's almost, yeah, this is really hard to, I was afraid this would happen. This is really hard to photograph because it, it, it gives off light. It's just so gorgeous. It's showing up way darker. It is more of a real turquoise teal color. It is showing up as a blue. It is it's not blue. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, this is also something I have plans for, which will come back in a bit. I'll show you what I want to do with it. So um, then I have two hangs that are all my own. All for myself. <laughs> uh, this is PR140. And this is just a beautiful multicolored well, Hank. This is actually very true to color, true to life, as I'm seeing it on my screen. So it has uh, gold going into green and teal and blue and purple and what is it magenta back to gold yeah this is pretty close to real life colors and i am also having something with fabric ready to go on this so i will show you that as well in a bit then in my opinion a beautiful beautiful sampler color pro67 this is, um, it is really hard to describe this color. I thought it might be a bit more red, but it's more of a, I guess it's more of a purplish red, like dried blood. I know that sounds macabre, but that's the best way I can describe it because dried blood goes from more reddish to more brownish. That's the kind of color that this is. This is showing up more saturated and more red than it is in real life. In real life it's more of a rusty red brown. So this is also one that's hard to photograph. Yeah, it's it's definitely not looking the way it's looking on screen in real life. It is a rusty red and it's gorgeous. And I am going to be using this for um, maybe two patterns depending on how much I'm going to be able to use but there are some patterns in the Julia line book that I have that I'm, I might want to use this for and there's also some Violanda type style patterns that I have in my stash that I think this would be gorgeous for but this is not going to be out anytime soon because I don't have it. I'm probably going to use it on a, just a white fabric, but I'm not going to plan any start on this anytime soon. <coughs> so, my only purchase before the retreat, so now we're getting into more of the retreat stuff. Um, I am a bit hesitant to show you everything because it, it's just so much and I, I got a lot of gifts which I am really thankful for but I also feel a bit bad about showing everything because I, yeah, I don't know, it's just weird 
I don't know, can't explain it. But I will try and show you as much as I can that I feel comfortable with. I might just show you all, I don't know, we'll just see how it goes. But uh, before we do that, let's just talk about retreat. <laughs> so, um, I realize that I have communicated a lot about retreat, but not necessarily with people outside of the attendees. So, uh, there uh, might have been a few surprises for people who follow me on Instagram when we, f we finally started retreat. Uh, we had uh, we had to retreat uh, in the north of the Netherlands in Roden, uh, close to uh, uh, a an, an local needle workshop called the Handwerk Boutique, and we were free to go in and out as we pleased uh, during shop hours uh, on Friday and Saturday, and had a great time. I will uh, I will link any shop that I mentioned below. Um, uh, but besides that, I asked, uh, when I started planning for the retreat last summer, I, I contacted Yuchus from x Design and I asked her very carefully, because uh, I, I didn't know how to approach this, if she might be interested in coming and having a pop-up store in, at our retreat. Which I was so happy to find out that she was very excited about doing that and she would love to do that. So she was there with a pop-up pop -up store. As well as uh, Deborah who is Surimini on Etsy. I will link their shops as well. Who sells needle minders that she makes herself. Uh, she uh, gladly uh, brought some uh, of her needle minders to sell at retreat as well. So we were very fortunate to have such a wonderful array of um, shops that we could pick and choose from. And I just wanted to th say thank you to everyone, uh, all the shop owners for their support. And uh, we had such a great time and that was... Uh, not only because we had such a wonderful group of people, but also because we had such a wonderful time at all the shops. Um, what else? So we were 25. Uh, again, I was amazed at how many people really uh, wanted to come uh, so badly that uh, we were almost fully booked before I even opened up uh, for uh, outsiders. So I, I gave the people from last year a chance to, uh, to subscribe early, to register early for the retreat, which everyone did. And then I opened it up for the people who, were, who had mentioned they were interested and then I was fully booked within a day, I think. So uh, yeah, that was awesome. I can't thank everybody enough. I know people were disappointed who couldn't make it to a retreat. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't. I, yeah. I can't fix that. Anybody who's shown any interest in being at retreat and message me on my email address, which I will put somewhere here, uh, has been put on a, a mailing list for next year. If there is going to be a next year, I never know for sure. I always play it by ear a bit and before I decide yeah, if I want to do it or not. Um, but yeah... Um, we had a full house, we had a lot of fun, uh, there was a mix up with the hotel stitch room which meant we got a room double the size than what we ordered or what we planned for. So it was a bit of a big room but that, that was also a lot of fun. People brought a lot of stuff to share as freebies which was amazing. Uh, people brought amazing finishes. I took photos and film footage throughout the, the retreat and I think I will have to insert them here before I go on to all the other stuff. So I'm going to add in some pictures of general impressions of uh, the retreat as well as I think I took one or more videos of the, the table with all the beautiful finishes that all the participants brought to show off. That was wild. So I'll put that here.
So we lucked out with a bigger room, but I thought I would just show you before all the chaos breaks out. <laughs> so awesome room, right? Plenty of space. Oh, okay, nog meer met Pien. Oh, wat leuk. Dankjewel, wat fijn dat je dat ziet. <laughs> Mavis doing her engineering. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, oh, I like <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Ja, um, 
I'm gonna. I have a little pile next to me with with gifts that people gave me as a thank you for attending or from from my from me organizing the retreat. I want to stress again that was not necessary, but very much appreciated. Um, I must also admit that um, I'm not entirely sure who gave me what. <laughs> <laughs> because I know I was also all sometimes sort of distracted by other people coming in or going while I was getting gifts. So I do apologize for that. I I think I know everybody who gave me anything and I'm not, I'm I think I I've, I've ate, eaten some of it already. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> um but yeah, um so I can't show that because I got a little can of stroke waffles. Yum yum. I don't know where to start. That's a bit awkward. Let's just start with this because that was so funny. Uh, Nolene, who is the expat stitcher on Instagram, gave me this beautiful zippered, front zipper, um, project bag, which, yeah, love that. And she made me, make sure, oh yeah, and uh, a little magnet of her local area, well, local eyesore, as we discussed. <laughs> anyway, um, she made me this beautiful uh, design, uh, which I'm holding upside down. But this is uh, a pattern that was on my list to stitch, which is a freebie from, I think it's from Plum Street. Uh, and I just love this saying. And I love uh, Nolene for thinking of me and making this for me with help of her mom, I think. So mom, thank you very much. Yeah, love that. I'm gonna have to find a place for all my coffee finishes now. But yeah, definitely needed another bag. <laughs> uh, let's see what I can grab easily. My friend Anarik got me this gorgeous frog to put in the garden. My neighbors will think I'm finally doing some gardening. <laughs> and she got me a beautiful surprise. This gorgeous coffee mug. Oh my God, I love this. It's too beautiful. I, I, I thought about using this today for drinking out of, but it was just, I, I need to look at it a bit more before I accidentally smash it and knock off a chip somewhere. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, I know uh, these came from Cheryl, uh, who lives in Qatar, and she brought me, uh, can you see? Beautiful finishing material from her local souk, I think, as well as a selection of gorgeous, gorgeous threads for me to try out, which, yeah. Thank you. And uh, oh gosh. Blah. Too much little things. Uh, Denise made me this gorgeous little mug rug. I think this is supposed to be. Look at that. That is gorgeous. With a gorgeous uh, fibrilicious skein. Um, and some other little things. Um, See, now I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to feel embarrassed about all the gifts. So please excuse me if I don't sound grateful. <laughs> it's just that I don't know how to handle this kind of thing. Um, Rosemary from uh, Switzerland got me a beautiful Carandash pen in my favorite color. If you don't, uh, if you're not familiar with the uh, the label, the brand, it's a very well-known brand for artists, for any kind of artist stuff, including we used to use the pencils for geological mapping. They are very good for that. 
and my sister uses them for uh, drawing. Uh, Lola. Someone gave me this. I think it might have been Denise as well. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. But yummy. And then I got a beautiful book from Evelyn, which is a Dutch book, but very interesting about uh, a local um, Yeah, I'm not sure if he was in the resistance or he was sort of in the resistance, but not officially, but yeah, I'm going to read about him. Uh, it's about the Second World War and some uh, local uh, uh, efforts to help people who are hiding from the Germans. Thank you very much, Evelyn. Uh, and then Dunja got me a giant box and when I opened it, she got me uh, my own little stitchy spot. Can you tell it's a share? With on the back of it, a gorgeous scissor, scissors. Love this. Now I can finally put it at my stitching spot. And it has the cushion you can use for it sticking in your pins, I guess. Yeah, so cute. Um, and. Margreet, ja, zie je? Yummy, yummy, yummy chocolate from Margreet. I'm, I'm hoping that I mentioned everyone who cut me anything. If I didn't, I am really sorry. Please let me know if I did or um, direct message me or something. Because I might have gotten something out somewhere and I forgot to put it in my pile of gifts. Who knows? Uh, so, uh, I'm going to do two things before we move on to uh, purchases. I had it here. Okay, yeah. So, the beautiful Mev from Mev Stitches in Paris offered to make everybody a name tag. So, she and her mom got, to, got creative and made everybody beautiful name tags with a little patch of fabric. And thank you so much, Mav. Um, that was really nice of you to do that. Uh, that saved me uh, the hassle of doing it. <laughs> and now I have another name tag to add to my bag of name tags. <laughs> and uh, then we had a gift and ornament exchange. And Honey made me this gorgeous, gorgeous little holder with beautiful stitching, beautiful colors and beautiful finishing. I mean, she even added a, a button with a little button hole thingy. How do you call this? I don't know. But when you look inside, it holds tissues, which was very useful because I was still going through my phase of sniffling all the time for my hay fever. So yeah, I love this. Having a bit of a hard time getting it close, but yeah. I was blown away by this. Thank you so much, honey. That's gorgeous. And she brought me some cookies. A lot. Which I haven't touched yet, but speak last from her local baker. Like I haven't had enough sweets all weekend. <laughs> so I think, oh yeah. Now I lost that thing again. Where is it? Oh, here it is. You choose. I hope I'm, I, I think I'm saying her name right now. This is what she got. It's, it's not in focus, but she got us all a little horn book with her the name on it. And I'm going to put a little magnet in the back and make it into a needle minder, I think. Love that. Thank you very much. And then the shop came by on Saturday <coughs> and gave us all a surprise. I'll try and see. Oh yeah. Uh, a needle with a ball point. I haven't tried them it yet. I need to make sure 
I wonder what thickness it is. I have to check it, but it looks like a 26 thickness. I'm gonna have to try it out. People are raving about it. I'm not convinced yet. Uh, but I haven't tried it yet. So and and she gave us all skeins of uh, limited edition sampler threads by Gentle Art. I got the beautiful brown chocolate uh, coffee colored chocolate colored one two. And I got this beautiful card. She made a few of her displays into cards last year. Love that. And a free pattern. But other people already showed that. Um, I'm going to clean this up and come back and show you my uh, embarrassing haul. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, round two. Um, some of these were gifts. That's my justification. <laughs> Most of them were not. <laughs> what happened is um, I arranged with the, the, the needle workshop uh, who were plan who always go to Nashville uh, to have the option to pre-order things from market or from the shop. Uh, I made use of that. Um, and then I did the same arrangement with uh, YouTubes from Exu Design to have people pre-order anything they wanted from her shop uh, so that she could actually prepare a bit in advance because that might have been a lot of work to get done all in one week. Then I just want to say a thank you to everybody who took advantage of that option and thank you to YouTube for the very generous uh, special offer that she was having for the retreat. Um, so I purchased quite a bit of fabrics with specific um, uh, projects in mind. Um, but I just I will start off with the patterns because that's a bit more easy to handle. So lots of crinkling gonna be happening here. Um, during retreats, uh, Rafaela, who is a friend of uh, I forgot her first name, but Fairy Fairy Wool in the Woods is a designer on Etsy. And she was uh, so excited about what was going on. She decided to give us a little gift of a pattern, uh, which is very much appreciated. Thank you very much. I'm going to see if I can find her name. Uh, no, it doesn't say. Oh, Cassandra. So thank you very much, Cassandra. That is very much appreciated. We enjoy that as a surprise at the end of the retreat. Um, so let's see. Okay. Uh, I, I purchased some, uh, a few uh, releases that were released at markets, but I most, mostly asked the shop to look out for things that have been on my wish list for quite a while that I was wanting to kit up and I needed a pattern for, uh, or that I were hard to find in the Netherlands or in Europe. Um, so I'm going to try and or sort this by designer. So bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Teresa Kogut, I was so happy to find out that she was actually starting to release not only punch needle uh, uh, designs, but cross stitch designs. And this was one that really spoke to me. And of course, with the sheep. But I so love this. So, yeah. I had to have this. I will come back to that in a bit. Then I was uh, struck by uh, Kathy Haberman's You Had Me at Flamingo, which I just 
how can you not? I mean, I love this. I will definitely stitch this, maybe even this summer, because I just, it's so fun. Um, then, I was so happy to hear all the adventures that Stephanie was having at Lindy Stitches with her first market, uh, well, uh, her debut at market, I, I guess I should say, with her shop. And this was on my list for a long time, but uh, I decided I wanted not... Um, I wanted the paper pattern, not the, the PDF, so I asked the shop to get this for me because, I mean, I know everybody's already stitched this, but yeah, I, I, yeah. No words, because it's gorgeous. And this was so much fun. It's not my usual style, but I just loved it. I had to have it and I was so anxious I wouldn't that I messaged Stephanie about it to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much Stephanie for replying well during your busy times um, with all the necessary finishing materials as well this is a cooperation with Lady Dot Creates as you may well know it's just so much fun I'll get back to Stephanie in a bit then the blue flower everybody went crazy over her debut as well I love her quilting bee but I don't really have anything with quilting or bees, but I, brow I did go and look at her website where I spotted this pattern, which wasn't on her release page, but I love this. And, and Mary Rose, if you're watching, you may understand why. Uh, it's, called, it's called Tiger Tiger. And it's the poem by, I think it's Robert Frost. Uh, Tiger Tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? I don't still, I still don't understand the rhyme in there, but okay. But I just love, I love that there's the poem bit, the bits of the poem on there. I love that she's dancing with a tiger. I love the lanterns. I love every bit about this. It's so quirky. I had to have this. Um, What else can I say? Uh, then I went a bit ink circle mad, as I always do. Uh, I love a few of her new releases and I asked them to get them for me. So this is the Athena Noctua release that I absolutely love. It's based on the Greek, ancient Greek uh, Athens uh, city uh, coin, city state. I love this. I am going to have to stitch this. I knew when I saw it immediately. Dog's declaration, surprise maybe for some people, but yeah. Um, yeah. The life, liberty and the pursuit of squirrels is just basically my life. <laughs> so I am thinking that I am, uh, because I, I'm not necessarily making this into a, some sort of dog sampler, because I have never had a dog, I will never have a dog. I'm not a dog or a cat person, I like them both, but I'm just not a pet person. Um, but... Squirrels I like and I also reminded me a bit of the witches series that I was doing if you know if you're familiar with that You will know what I mean So I might take out the dogs and replace them with squirrels or maybe replace them with witcher witcher type references Not sure yet um, Before I come to this I will be See now probably but yeah <laughs> um, So this is uh, the pattern that I got that beautiful turquoise silk for. This has been on my wish list in forever. It's, you don't often come across it, so I'm glad that uh, the shop uh, asked Tracy to bring some of hers to uh, retreat. Yeah, I love this Turkish delight. There's debate going on uh, with people who stitch this if they want to uh, display it like this or like this. I think I like it like this better because it's more symmetrical but we'll see when I stitch it how it turns out but yeah that is why I needed that beautiful blue Turkish delights then the final ink circle that I got is a uh, little alien schoolgirl also on my wish list for quite a long time I am not a traditional sampler stitcher and I will not stitch alphabets but I will stitch an alien alphabet because I just think it's so funny and all the little quirky uh, patterns I just love it yeah 
that was all the Ink Circles Madness. Then uh, one of the releases from Drawn Thread caught my eye. It's, it's one of those things where you go, why did you not take a more close-up picture? Because you have all this and then the pattern is only this. So yeah, I'm going to try and show you, but it's from my heart. It's a little... Uh, oh, there's a better picture on the back, actually. <laughs> But yeah, I thought it was a very cute thing to have in my stash, especially for like gifts or things like that. And then I got this, which is a re-release and, and um, original patterns for this you can uh, find as a freebie on the, uh, or the Rainbow Gallery website. You can find all the alphabet. There's, um, this is a series of letter uh, patterns and each page is a letter and for every letter she uses a specialty stitch um, but this re-release contains all the patterns as well as all the instructions on how to make this into a book as well as information on all the thread colors and fabrics that she used and it's a bit pricey but because the patterns are online and are available for free but I thought it was worth it for all the effort she put into it and to have the instructions on how to make this booklet. Because someday when I'm old and if, or even older and even more grey, I'm going to make this. Um, that was Market. Except for there was an extra pattern in my uh, Market. Um little bag well extra an extra kit and i have seen this design and she also had a debut i think on market i'm not sure how to pronounce it i'm going to say avlea uh, it's uh, with traditional greek patterns i love this i i almost uh, uh, ordered some of her patterns but my my list of order was already growing that big that I thought maybe next year. And then Stephanie surprised me and gave this to me as a gift. Thank you much, very much, Stephanie. That was a lovely surprise. And yeah, stitchy friends are good friends. Uh, then I didn't get anything from the, sh the LNS on the first day. And the next day I came back with a plan, which I will talk about in a bit, but I came across, when I was just browsing through the patterns, I came across this uh, needlework press pattern, which I figured that's the perfect thing to get as a reminder of this retreat. And the name of the pattern Trying to see if there's a name or if it's just... Yeah, there's no name, so it's, I guess it's just made the hinges of friendship never rust is the saying on the, on the pattern. If you need to look it up. Then... Uh, God. Coffee. Uh, Orietta, when I was at her house, she showed me her stitchy stash and I uh, uh, ooed and odd over some of her patterns, including a hands across the sea samplers. And she mentioned that she wasn't sure she would ever stitch it and she might want to sell it. So um, when she got on the plane, she basically messaged me and said, well, I have it with me. Uh, if you want to buy it, let me know. <laughs> Of course I had to buy it because this is one of the few hands across the sea samplers that I was tempted and didn't buy at uh, release but was regretting what, that I didn't. This is the Oefendel sisters. There's two patterns in here. I can, can't show you the back because there's also a, a card that comes with the pattern but um, go check out uh, Olivia B uh, I think has his. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who have this. I think Lisa, Kindred Stitcher, you have this one too? Not sure. Anyway, it's a, it's a known pattern. It was a limited edition. It, and I thank you, Orietta, for giving me the opportunity to get it. 
So now it's in my pile of things that I will probably never get to, but uh, at least I know I have it. Okay, stitchy problems. So what did I do uh, with my plan? Um, I decided that I would check out for these two if I had the necessary cold for, for threads. Turns out I had almost none of them. So I went back to the store and uh, shopped the gorgeous roll of uh, threads and got all of these to kit up those projects. As you can imagine, there's lots and lots and lots of pinks for every type of flamingo in here. But yeah. And then my budget was blown. <coughs> Well, it was also because I purchased some, uh, hang on, need that one, some extra design fabric and trimmings, which I'm going to show you now. Um, and I must say, some of these were gifted to me by YouTubers, which again, I have no words, but thank you very much. That was not necessary, but yeah. Oh my God, I love that. Um, so I uh, I wanted to check out her hand-dyed pom-poms. So I, I, I bought a few because those are colors that I think I will always be able to use. Uh, so here are the, these are not the mini pom-poms, they are the regular size. They're showing up mm, close to true for most part. This is a bit too saturated. It's more of a rust color. And a dark orange. But yeah, so we have uh, dark terracotta. We have, which is basically a, like a pumpkin color. We have uh, teal blue green, which is more of a, which I would say is a more of a, uh, like a mossy green, I guess. Like a faded green. Uh, this is a antique blue. I guess I would call this an antique green. It's a bit of a faded. It's more looking more saturated than in real life. In real life, it's more of a dusty, dust, dusty look to it. It's not dusty, but you know what I mean. Uh, dark cocoa, which is a beautiful brown. And this is red velvet. Which again, it looks much more orange than in real life. In real life, this is a rusty brown. Yeah, going to be using those. Thank you very much. You choose. And then uh, all, all the fabrics I'm going to show you are 40 count linen. In case you're wondering. So this is the fabric that I had in mind for this. So I'm going to show you what it looks like together. This is an alabaster. It's, it's like a very, very, very light gray. And of course, it's not at all going to show up. Oh. It's a very light gray. Um, but I think, because I don't think it would work with a white fabric, but the very light gray fabric is going to do really, really well for this. Yeah, so that's going to be oh. <laughs> this. Again, the, the blue is much more vibrant than it's showing in the, in the footage. But yeah, so that's one project kitted. Excuse me. And ready for a start somewhere this year. I, I might even start this for my birthday. Not sure. We'll see. But yeah. And then we have another one. Um, sorry for it. my nose is itchy. So this is uh, the color coffee, which I love. I love this. It's it's showing up a bit more reddish brown than it is in real life. To me, it's more of a yellowish brown in real life. But I got this to try for to combine with. This beautiful silks that I showed you earlier. 
which is just perfect for it. Hang on. Let's try. <laughs> Let's try and be elegant, shall we? Yeah, it's not showing up very well. But I got this with a pattern in mind, which I don't have, but will probably only have in PDF, which is another ink circles, cirque de cercle. Yeah, I think that's going to be really nice for that. Oh, so happy. So. Then we have this one, which is willow green, which is a beautiful spring green. It's really like an Easter kind of color to me. Top berry. It's showing up a bit lighter. I'm sorry. Uh, it's showing up a bit lighter than it is. In real life. But I got this to combine with this and it works perfectly, I think. I had another option that, but I prefer this one. So, yeah, perfect, right? And I'm totally stealing this idea from um, Debbie, Creatively Yours, because I'm going to do the Quaker on this. Yeah, I think that'll be gorgeous. <sighs> then we have something that's going to blow your mind, I think, because it blew mine when I saw it. This is Sunset Sky. Are you ready for this? Bam. Yeah, that's showing up pretty accurately. Not in my comfort zone at all with this, but I asked you, uh, you, you, you choose specifically to make this because, as you can see, it's, a, it's not a regular size cut. It's a specific cut because I have in my blue box of kitted projects a Renato Parlin design of a landscape, which I kitted up in a pearl grey fabric with a cream coloured thread, as suggested. And I'm just not loving it. That's why I haven't started it. So this is going to be a sunset background fabric. And I'm going to use a dark, probably 3711 dark brown fabric to make it into a sort of silhouette uh, on, 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 on a sunset sky. Which I think will be amazing. Wish me luck with that. But that might be another start. So those are four things that I basically kitted up with a specific project in mind. And the next things I'm going to show you are uh, some stock uh, fabrics of colors that I just love and where I was running low on. So this is uh, brown sand, which is the same fabric that I used or the same color that I used for my Salem piece. That I finished last year and it's showing up really light but yeah you can sort of get a glimpse it's really like a bit of a gray stone concrete kind of with a little, little little patches of brown tan it makes into them it's not really showing up very well but yeah love this color uh, works really well for moody back, uh, backgrounds and moody pieces. This is, of course, a, another piece of Rocky Mountain because I love that. This is more of a like a marble, a white marble background. It's not really picking up a bit though. Yeah, love this. Always can use this. Um, then we have some, she had some leftover fabric of the month. And when I saw this, I was sold. Oh my God. So I got two pieces of the 
last year's October fabric of the month called Spooky. Because when I saw this, I, th I had an uh, epiphany of what I could stitch on this. It is tans and spots, uh, spots of grey on it. The other piece has a lot more spots, I think. But I saw this and I immediately thought of some Egyptian patterns that I have in my stash that I, that I was looking for some kind of a mummy wraps kind of fabric for it. And I think this will be perfect for it. Look at this. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this. This is just, this is very accurate. I love this. Yeah, I absolutely love this. So um, I'm sort of sort of regretting not being in the fabric of the month club anymore <laughs> when I see this kind of fabric. But oh well, maybe I should do another retreat and then you you just can come and give me all the leftovers again or give sell me all the leftovers again. This is a uh, gold sand, which is not uh, the other one that I showed was uh, this one was uh, brown sand. So very different. So don't get them mixed up. This is gold sand, which is like a watered down version, I guess, of the spooky that I just showed. It has a little bit of gray and yellow spots in there, but it's toned down. Yeah, I love that gold sand. I'm sure I will find some use for that. So those are just stash fabrics to have because I think they will, all, they will work for multiple projects. We're not done, guys. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I am still having a bit of a cough. So, almost done. I know, embarrassing, right? Um, so these are sort of test fabrics that I got because I wasn't sure of if the other pieces that I got would work for the projects that I had in mind and uh, the fibers that I got. So this is uh, Frosty Aqua. I think I will use this for a Scarlet Letter design that I have called the Black Griffin. It is yeah, like a very light blue. It's not a baby blue, it's more of a, I don't know, I'm, I'm difficult, but I don't know how to call this. This is more of a very, very light turquoise blue. Just think of glacier blue, but then very, very, very toned down, I guess. I'm so bad with color descriptions. Anyway, this is baby sheep, which is an interesting color because it has a bit... It, doesn't show very well oh, a bit. It's a bit of a peachy color, very, very, very light peach. But in some lights, it's more of a, a tan. So that's interesting. I think this will have to work very well with whatever thread I will put on it. So I'm going to have to think about what I could use for that and maybe experiment a bit with different colors on it to see what the background effect will be. But yeah, that was a, a backup. I have an itchy nose. This is such a beautiful color. This is Hunter Green. Uh, I just got this because I love the color and not sure what I will do with it yet, but that this might be an ink circles background. Forest of Sumatra? I don't know. Yeah, I love this. This is showing up really through the color as well. And then the final one I got was something that I might have used again for the Quaker. This is more of a baby blue. It's called Old Blue. This is what I would call a baby blue. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty close to real life colors. Um not going to use it for the Quaker, but I'm sure I will find some use for it. It might be for a, a wintry pattern, could be good for a springy pattern. We'll f I'm fine. I'll find something, I'm sure. But yeah, that was my embarrassing 
pile, mountain of stuff. That's what happens when you don't buy anything until you go to retreat. <laughs> no, I'm really happy with what I got. I knew that I wanted to get a lot of fabrics and I knew I wanted to get certain uh, patterns. I basically have been um, uh, buying with a purpose because as, as you have seen, I kitted up a few projects and then I got greedy and just I got some stuff that I thought was pretty, but mainly I kitted up projects, so yeah, I'm, I'm okay with what I spent. I spent within my limits, so I'm good. Uh, but I do feel that was a bit much to show, because, I don't know, it's, it's weird to show a lot of a whole. Um... I'm done. I'm, I'm, my throat hurts. <laughs> Thank you for all those who attended the retreat. I had such a great time. I hope you all enjoyed it by the looks of it and by what you have been sharing. I think you did. Um, uh, like yeah, last year, I don't feel I had enough time with all of you to talk and uh, catch up and um, as you have uh, experienced yourselves, um, that's hard to do when everybody's going in and out, but yeah. Um, I hope you all had a fun time. I definitely did, and I will think about doing another one. We'll think about it. Um, and another thank you to all the shops who participated, and uh, that, that made it even better. And for all of you who, in one way or another, um, uh, put effort in to make this a fun stay, um, thank you. Just thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. I have uh, learned that uh, I need to work on uh, a new series of Dutch facts uh, because I found out that um, apparently we need more. We need to, we need to share more about the, the the eating habits of the Dutch because we basically eat bread twice a day. So for for breakfast and for lunch, most people eat bread with something on it, not not a sandwich like a big sandwich, but just. Bread with a slice of cheese, or bread with a slice of cold cuts, or bread with some jam, or whatever. Um, but we were talking about what we put on bread, and it turns out we put a lot of stuff on bread that people are surprised by. So that's going to be a little bit of a new tutorial series, I guess. Not sure when I'm going to do it, but it's on my list of things to talk about. So thank you very much, Orietta, for pointing it out to me. <laughs> Uh, and I need to do another series about Dutch cookies because apparently we weren't waxing lyric lyrically enough about our great cookies. See, I got it in there somewhere. Um, no pun intended, by the way. Okay, dirty mind switching off. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 I feel like I'm forgetting something and I'm sure I did and I, I apologize in advance. Um, We had a blast. Uh, talk to me in a few months about doing it again. <laughs> because it's always a bit of an effort to get everything organized, but yeah, so worth it in the end. Um, and yeah, just a big thank you to everybody who came from abroad because that always blows me away. We had a few extra people coming over from uh, Qatar and Italy and France this year, so we have added a f uh, one more country to the list of Dutch retreat countries. Um, yeah, now I'm just, just trying to think of things to say because I don't want to turn off the video, so I'm just going to stop rambling and say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too embarrassing amount of stash or haul or whatever you want to call it, balls. <laughs> Um, 
and uh, I hope everybody's doing well. I am looking forward to seeing all the pictures and videos coming out of the retreat that's going on right now in Arizona. It looks like an amazing fun time and I am going to say uh, have a good time. Uh, I hope you are doing well and I hope you are stitching and having some fun. I don't know, what was that? <laughs> that was weird. Anyway, bye guys.